Hello, welcome to InfoHub. Here is what you need to know for Wednesday, June 27, 2018. Presidential term limit judgment, a victory for Guyanese and the Constitution, says Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu. No threatening levels of mercury at GGMC complex, more communities to be lit. And we will also tell you about a thriving poultry project in the hinterland regions. And now for the details. The ruling on June 26 by the Caribbean Court of Justice to uphold presidential term limits has been described by Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu as a triumph for Guyanese and the Constitution. The veteran politician noted that the opposition leader's sincerity is now questioned when he stated that he was not interested in a third term. Here is Gabriela Patram with her first report. The Prime Minister said the Constitution clearly states that there are only two terms for a person serving as president. He reminded that the citizens have consented to this amendment when they participated in the constitutional reform process in 1996. He noted that when the amendment was eventually taken to the National Assembly in 2000, both of the parties, the PPP and the PNC, voted for there to be only two terms for anyone who would contest to be president, which meant that the opposition leader, Barrett Jack Dio, signed on to. He noted that there were persons inside the PPP who did not support the motion for Mr. Jagdio to run for a third term. I believe that we have to be more decisive in public life. And I have seen the attempts that have been made to start a campaign for a third term for Mr. Jagdio. And I am now questioning whether or not he had been sincere when he said he was not interested in a third term. In explaining what the CCJ decision means for Guyanese, the Prime Minister said the Constitution should be respected since it is the instrument by which Guyanese should be guided. He added that the judicial system should be respected and not have motives of bias and racism ascribed to it. I believe that this slaughter of our judicial system, of judicial officers, should come to an end. That the ambition of one person should not be used as an instrument to destroy our symbols of justice and fairness, our symbols of, of judicial review and of resolution of conflicts. Yesterday, President of the Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ, Sir Dennis Byron, stated that a two-term restriction is not unlawful. The CCJ ruled 6-1 to one that the presidential term limit in Guyana's constitution is fit and proper. The historic ruling was handed down from the Trinidad Base Courtroom. Gabriela Patram for InfoHub. The Pan American Health Organization, PAHO WHO team, assessing the claims of mercury exposure at GGMC, has found no threatening levels of mercury at the complex. Tiffany Rodias tells us more. The PAHO WHO team presented their oral report to the Ministers of Public Health and Natural Resources, Minister of Natural Resources, Raphael Trotman, on their findings. The team did say, though they're not here to certify that necessarily, but they did say that they found that the levels at the GGMC compound and its environs were below um, the any threatening levels, and so um, that, I believe, is a, a testament to the fact that the job was well done. The international team of experts visited Guyana last week and, among other things, assessed the mercury cleanup efforts at the Guyana Georgian Mines Commission Brookdown Complex. Minister Trotman noted the recent mercury exposure situation at the GGMC complex is an opportunity to improve how the mining industry utilizes mercury. Every effort will be made and that effort has started to ensure that they're protected and that we deal with, uh, with mercury and its, its ill effects. The Ghana Gold Board seized the burning of gold at the GGMC complex in April following health and safety concerns. The GGB is currently sourcing alternative resources to conduct its exercises. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Flood waters in Region 9 are receding after some parts of the Rupununi were flooded following annual heavy rainfalls. Details from Paul McAdam. Several government agencies conducted an aerial assessment in several areas, including Masara, Aishalton, Karasabai, Tigerpon, and Toka. Director of the lead agency, the Civil Defense Commission, Lieutenant Colonel Acting Kester Craig, said the flooding was attributed to increased water levels in the Earing, Takatu, and Rupununi rivers. Based on information report from the Hydromet Services, the rainfall experienced in Region 9 and Region 8 was said to be normal and not necessarily above normal. Hence, the conclusion is 
is that the crescent of the river banks of Takutu and the Erie River is mainly because of heavy rainfall that is occurring in the Roraima state of Brazil. The team, which included officials from three ministries, public infrastructure, public health and agriculture, assessed the situation in north and south central Rupununi, south Park Roraimas. Region 9's chairman, Brian Alicock, reported that floodwaters have begun to recede with the exception of the village of Karasabai in the south, Bakarimas. The water is still coming in from the mountains um, through the earring. Even though the Takatu is receding, the earring is still come bringing in water through the Maho area in the Karasabai sub-district. And um, we, we are putting in place the boat and engine to uh, transport people from the Karasabai landing to either Good Hope or Global, El Global Landing. The Ghana Livestock Development Authority is providing assistance to affected villages. The Public Infrastructure Ministry will examine affected roads and culverts and take corrective actions. And the Ministry of Public Health is ensuring that there are adequate medical supplies to treat persons affected by any waterborne or vector-borne diseases. The CDC will continue to monitor and provide support. Paul McAdam for InfoHub. Thanks for staying with us. Streets and roadways in Ghana will soon be lit as over $3.5 billion in funding has been secured from Japan for the installation of lights countrywide. Renata LaFleur has more in the story. The grants were signed today and handed over to the government at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs conference room. These will be utilized for the introduction of renewable energy and the improvement of power system and procurement of LED lights. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenish described the project as crucial for the Green Agenda initiative. Both the project for the introduction of renewable energy and the improvement of power system on the one hand and the procurement of light emitting diodes, LED street lamps on the other will contribute significantly to our country's uh, Green State initiative. The grants will see the installation of over 7,000 LED lights along the major roads and highways and 2,000 in community streets countrywide. Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Annet Ferguson, said it is also part of efforts to improve road safety. I must admit that when we examine our accident score sheet, it is quite evident that the majority of our serious and fatal accidents occur mostly at night. The absence of street lamps in many of these areas is seen as a major contributing factor. The project is a collaborative effort between the governments of Japan and Guyana. Japan's ambassador with responsibility for Guyana, Mitsuhiko Okada, noted that Guyana and Japan have been collaborating on issues of mutual interest since 1967. Renetta LaFleur for InfoHub. Minister of Public Health Waldo Lawrence has called on the members of the National Presidential Commission for Non-Communicable Diseases to be aware of what is occurring at the grassroots level in communities countrywide. Isaiah Braffitt has the details. The minister made a call as the opening of a capacity building workshop designed to help the commissioners to better understand their roles and responsibilities. If we are to counter the adverse effects of our people's health and economic life, there is need to reach out to our communities and initiate the fight there against the chronic and non-communicable diseases. The commissioners, to my mind, need to be fully cognizant of this role and responsibility and must seek to have evidence-based data on what pertains in each of the regions President of the Healthy Caribbean Coalition, Sir Trevor Hassel, reminded stakeholders of their obligation to achieve the Commission's goals. What we're hoping to do, as I say, is to share with you over the remainder of the day our experiences and, and seek to see how we can uh, assist the, the Commission in going to, to another level. Commissioners Aboni Lekahwes 
and Ricardo Banwari spoke of their expectations. My whole expectation from this workshop is that we will be able to understand our role and function in society as NCD and we will be able to integrate with the HCC in terms of how we operate and ensure that our face out there, people understand what we are about. Based on the work, our work at social protection, it, I've expected to, it's expected that you know, I benefit from it so that I'll be able to take back all the um, information and as it relates to the clientele that we serve at Social Protection Ministry. The National Presidential Commission is aimed at reducing the incidence of non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and chronic lung disease. The body, launched last year, is chaired by His Excellency President David Granger. Isaiah Brafitt for InfoHub. We now bring you the inspiring story of 20-year-old Ashmin Hassan, a student from the first batch of graduating students from the Bartram Collins College of the Public Service. Former St. Rose's High School student told InfoHub that the Bartram Collins College adequately prepared her for her first job at the Ministry of Public Security. Ashmin says she is loving every bit of her learning experience. I chose Bertram Collins College of the Public Service because I saw it as a great platform for the youths to shine and to show that we are still there for Guyana. Well, at Bertram Collins, they taught you all the theories that you needed to know, and coming into the world of work, you were able to put it into practice, especially our custom service and ethical consideration class that taught you how to deal with customers and taking a telephone call and keeping you cool. And it's working out quite well because you're putting those things into practice and you're seeing that what the theory taught you is actually relatable. Hassan is also excited to be part of the new face of the public service. It really helped us, it gave us a boost on what we should expect from the public service and what is expected of public servants, so it was really a good help. The Bertram Collins College of the Public Service is a vision of President David Granger. It is intended to be the transformative agent that will create fundamental improvement in the performance and behavior of public servants. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. And here's our final report. The Black Giant Poultry Project, which commenced on February 1, 2017 in Region 8, has grown. At that time, over 100 Black Giant chickens with startup feed and other supplies were handed over to the Madia Secondary School. Stefan Gabriel got an update from the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Livestock and Development Authority, Nigel Kammerbach. The Black Giant Project that was mentioned would have started in 2017, and at this point in time, I can tell you we really cannot keep up with the demand um, that we are getting for the black giant chickens, particularly in areas like regions 1, 7, 8 and 9. Comrade explained that the dual purpose poultry is suitable to the hinterland communities because of its grazing habits. He also says the poultry will provide a readily available and less costly source of protein to the districts which otherwise are dependent on imports from other regions. The board is a phenomenal, quite a phenomenal board. It has the ability of giving you in excess of 200 eggs per year and it also um, can produce uh, about 4.5 4 kilograms of meat um, and as such because of its ability to graze rather than the continuous utilization of commercial feeds, the demand for it, particularly as it relates to the hinterland communities, is quite, quite great. The black giant poultry is a Creole breed. It is the largest of the dual purpose chicken and is excellent for meat and egg production over a longer period. It can lay in excess of 200 eggs per year and produce about 4.5 kilograms of meat. For InfoHub, Stefan Gabriel. Here now are your bridge and weather reports. And before we wrap up, let's leave you with the World Cup match results for today. Goodbye.